All right, another day, another WSB tournament. Today is the flight A of the $1,500 Monster Stack. Got the registration ready to go. Walking over to the convention center to register. The tournament started at 10 a.m. I am late registering at 5 p.m. So let's hop into it. Entering this tournament, assuming it's going to be a pretty long day, I buy in into level seven. Blinds are 500, 1,000, 1,000 with 50,000 in my stack. I pick up a beautiful ace king of diamonds in early position. I bump it up to 2,200 and only get one player to call on the button. So heads up, out of position, and the flop is ace, 10, deuce, two diamonds. This day could not start any better than how it's going right now. Amazing flat with top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw. I start off with a check, and this player checks behind. The turn is the jack of clubs, so the board is a little bit more connected, but I obviously have such a strong hand. I'm trying to pile money into the middle here, and I bet out 6,000. And for 6,000, he decides on a call, so it's nice that we're building a pot. We're off to a river, which is the deuce of spades, a complete brick, and I've just got to assume my hand's good here. Top pair, top kicker. Let's go for some value. I bet out 20,000 in this spot, and I think I can just get a lot of calls from worse aces and maybe even a non-believing jack. And after a little bit of thinking, he ends up flicking in a call. I show my ace king, and I lose? I lose to king queen offsuit, just turned the complete nuts for Broadway, and it holds. So, so much for thinking this is gonna be a, a long day, cause all of a sudden, after the first hand, I am down to 15,000 in chips, about 15 big blinds. Two hands later, after a disastrous start, I'm in the big blind where the low jack raises to 2200. There's a button that three bet to 6,000. And yeah, I'm in the big blind with 14,000 now in my stack. Ace jack offsuit is going to be good enough to jam. I four bet, rip it all in my very short stack. The low jack folds, but the button makes the call with pocket queens. Running into monsters here, but I do have outs. The flop gives me a gutter, so that's not too bad. The turn, ace! There we go. Fade the outs on the river, and I win. I double up to 30,000. So yeah, after these two swingy hands, I'm still alive. Moving on to the next fun spot, I pick up pocket sevens and plus one. I raise up to 2200 here and get both blinds to call. So I'm in position in this spot surprisingly, and the flop comes 1095 all clubs. Not sitting with the club in my hand seems like a pretty easy spot to just check all the way through. Seeing a free turn, which is a seven. Bink, just a good old set now on the turn. Even cooler, small blind checks, but the big blind bets out 4500. It's a pretty scary board, and I'm not going away, obviously. Certainly don't want to raise, it seems like an overplay, so I decide on just a call, and the small blind folds. The river now is the seven of clubs. Yep, the backdoor quad draw is something that you can never ever count out because he just might get there with the stone cold nuts. Anyways, he thinks for a while upon this spot, upon the seven and the board pairing and the fourth club on board, he bets out 4,000. It's nice to see him commit some more chips in the middle because it's clearly going to go my way. And I'm trying to figure out how much I should raise here. Seems like a spot where I'm just only going to be raising the nuts a lot of the time, and hopefully he has like the ace of clubs or something. I decide to go all in for 30,000 effective, more or less. He doesn't look too happy about this spot and ultimately ends up just folding. I don't assume that I would have gotten value if I even raised to a smaller sizing like 12 or 15,000. So yeah, maybe this player flopped the flush, wanted to block bet on the river and was gonna fold to no matter what sizing. But here I am. After getting crushed the first hand, it only takes the next two to be back at starting stack. All right, starting off this new level, that was a very fun level seven. We're in level eight now with King Jack offsuit in the small blind. There's a plus one raise to 2200, plus two calls, cutoff calls, and I have a playable hand here out of position. I decide to call as well. Off to a flop now, which comes King seven, six rainbow. Action checks around to the plus one player who puts in a continuation bet of 3000. The plus two player makes the call, which is something I'm a little concerned about, but flopping top pair, I'm not gonna go anywhere just yet, I call as well. When the turn is a three, pretty nice low connected board now, and when I'm first to act, I think I wanna decide to just go and lead. Kinda of bet small here, just hoping to get value from maybe some draws or even worse kings. So I bet out 14,000. The player in plus one who C bet the flop ends up getting out of the way, but the plus two player decides on a call. So interesting developments here. 
Now we're going heads up to a river, which comes a board pairing six. All things considered, it still seems like a pretty good spot to continue betting small for value. Think I can get some thin value versus worse kings or a non-believing seven or even pocket pairs from eights to tens. So with that said, I decided to bet out 15,000 and this player goes into the tank for a little bit. I bet out pretty much half of my stack and if she decides to go all in, I'm in a pretty bad spot. Luckily, she doesn't go all in, but ends up making the call with king, queen. Didn't think that that hand was going to fold ever. Maybe she thought about going all in potentially, but uh, yeah, I built it back up to starting stack and I crippled myself once again. Stack is down to 14,000. Sitting with another short stack once again, we're back at the same level. I pick up king jack of clubs in the small blind and there's a low jack open. Action folds to me and uh, yeah, this is a good hand to jam and go all in with. Suited Broadway cards, I'm a short stack, let's just run it. I jam, and this player calls with ace jack off suit. Not great, I'm dominated, but that's never stopped us before until now. Yeah, dealer throws out the cards and uh, ace jack is going to win this one. After a few minutes, I'm out in a tournament that I thought I would last a whole day in. All right, this one was never meant to be. Quick bullet, in and out within like less than an hour for sure. Unfortunate that this tournament you can't re-enter. So I will be back tomorrow for day 1B. That's it. What will I do for the rest of the day? Maybe you'll see in a different vlog, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. This same tournament, $1,500, let's go. So the next day has arrived for bullet number two in this tournament. We're back at the same blind level, level seven, 500, 1,000, 1,000 with 50K starting. Restarting the day, I pick up jack nine of spades under the gun. I raise it up to 2,100 and get the hijack to three bet to 6,000. Folds around to me and we're playing about 50 big blinds deep. I'm happy to make the call and battle it out. Let's see a flop dealer. The flop comes 10, seven, five, two clubs. Not a bad board for me at all here. I start off with the check and this player bets out 5,000. I think a small bet from this player makes a lot of sense. And on a board that could hit me a lot or have some good runouts that I can bluff on, I decide on a call. Let's peel a card. The turn comes a seven of clubs. The board is now paired. The flush draw gets there, and I have one of the worst hands I'll ever have in this spot. Just jack high and a gut shot straight draw. On a board that should favor me a lot, I decided to bet out 10,000. Starting to rep this board, starting to rep a strong hand. This player makes the call and is a non-believer. The river is now the queen of hearts, so I'm open-ended on the river. Obviously, that means nothing, and yeah. Early on in the tournament, I am trying to go for stacks, play super high variance, and I'm gonna bluff this one. Trying to apply maximum pressure here, I'm not giving up on this bluff. I jam it all in. Rip it all in, hoping to get a fold, and no, he calls quickly, because he has a strong hand. Pocket kings, nice hand. Uh, if there was ever rules and fundamental rules to be made about poker, number one, it'd be not to bluff into aces, and number two would be to not bluff into kings. GG's, this one was a quick little trip. Okay, one hand out. Seems like uh, the monster stack was not meant to be very efficient, I guess, but uh, a little annoyed. Don't bluff into kings, don't do that. Uh, I'll be back in the next tournament, whichever that may be. So I guess we'll speed it up to uh, the next WSOP or tournament adventure that I'm gonna go on. <sighs> rough one. All right, the last two bullets in the 1500 monster stack did not go well. I have a good lucky charm. My hat. <laughs> Anyways, we have an $800 tournament today. It's going to be a turbo, two buy-ins max, and I'm late regging. So uh, yeah, 800 bucks. There's 3000 entrants, it seems like, and maybe we can last longer than just one hand. We'll see. It's been a fun series of bust outs, but how about we try winning one of these things? We're in the $800 deep stack now, and I enter into level eight, and I pick up King Jack of Hearts in the low jack. My starting stack from 40,000 is down to 32,000 when we pick up this hand. And let's go into it. There's a plus one raise to 2,500 and I decided to call in position. But weird thing is that now the button decides to three bet. And it's a really small sizing to 4,500. This was clearly a mistake and a misclick, but this 4,500 raise is going to stand. The plus one player makes the call for 2,000 more and I'm not going anywhere with my suited Broadway cards. I call as well. We're going three ways to a flop, which comes King Jack Jack, two clubs. Safe to say, this is a board that I enjoy seeing with King Jack myself, flopping the full house and action checks the button player who bets 3,500. Nice to see him commit chips in the middle. That's clearly going to be pushed my way. 
The early position plus one player makes the call, and I'm not going to scare anyone off. I make the call. The turn is the deuce of hearts. It's a complete brick, and sadly, no one puts money in the middle. Action checks all the way around. Now to a river, which is the three of diamonds, and the plus one player checks it over to me. Uh, trying to figure out what how much I want to bet, and the bet that makes the most sense is just all in. I have about 24,000 in my stack, and I push it all the way out to the middle. I think it's pretty important to bet big when I have a good hand, and you know, you guys have seen some punts. I could easily be bluffing for my entire stack as well. Let's try to get some value here in this spot though. I want to get called and the button after thinking it over does call the other player folds and I am going to take this one down. He showed that he had a king, couldn't let go of top pair and I can't blame this guy. Of course, no one's really gonna fold top pair ever to me. It's a nice start with a double up in this tournament. Let's run hot now. Following hand in level nine, blinds have increased and I pick up another fun hand, pocket tens in plus one. I raise it up to 2,600 and only get the big blind to make the call. This player, I have notes on, just lost a super big pot earlier on and he might be tilted. We're off to a flop of six, four, three, two hearts. And I think this is a really good board for the big blind overall. And if I was playing against maybe a regular or a pro, I'd probably check back a lot. But when he checks it to me, I'm going to bet for value here against this player and bet out 5,200. And for 5,200, this player makes the call. So we've got a pot building with an overpair. The turn is a three. Amazing as the board is paired. I basically have the best two pair combo now as expected and he checks for a second time. When he keeps checking, I'm gonna keep on betting for value because obviously I bet a lot with bluffs. So I size to 10.5 thousand and this player has about 28,000 in his stack. He ends up making the call, leaving himself 18,000 behind. The plan is just to get it all in on the river and the river is an ace. Oh yeah, that's really not a good card at all. I certainly can lose to some aces now, and when he checks it over to me, I have a decision to go for an all-in or just relax a little bit. And with pocket 10 seeing a pretty bad river card, I decided to be conservative. It's hard to find hands that can call three streets worse than tens. And I check it back, and he shows us king six off suit. I'm gonna take it down with pocket tens, and maybe he had one of the very few hands I definitely could have gotten value from. Although really thin, I'm not complaining. I'm getting chips pushed my way. When the blinds have increased, so has the action. In this clip, you'll see I have ace king versus a button all in of about 30,000. Obviously, I'm not folding here, so we're off to the races against pocket tens. And when we see the run out, unfortunately, tens is going to take this one down. I lose a 60,000 chip pot, which is pretty significant, but big shout out to my opponent, David, who watches the vlogs. Nice hand to you and I gave you 31,000. With blinds going up fast, we go from level 10, skipping level 11 into level 12 with this next hand. Blinds have increased up to 2,500 level now with under 100,000 in my stack. I pick up pocket sixes. Fun hand to play, I raise it up to 5,000. The player on my left goes all in for 9,800. Action folds around to me and yeah, of course I'm going to just make the call here versus a four big blind shove. And somehow I'm up against six, seven off suit. So, this player still has outs, but off to a run out, which is clean for pocket sixes. I win, and I'm just showing this hand, even though it's pretty insignificant, how shallow everyone is with a very, very fast structure in this tournament. This guy was literally sitting with four big blinds, basically peanuts, but I win this one, and we're off to dinner break. All right, little mini update here. Currently on dinner break for about 75 minutes. It's just chilling right now. Somehow found a way to crawl back after losing that flip to uh, 110,000 in my stack, give or take, and it's just, this is a fast freaking structure. So uh, we can bust or build a massive stack at any second, 30 minute blinds, it's massive turbo. Uh, that's it. So we'll see you guys uh, in an hour-ish when the play resumes, and hopefully I can run it up and uh, maybe this can be a long video. After a nice healthy meal, I'm ready to win some flips, but we're on to level 14. I skipped level 13 because nothing cool happened and the blinds have increased once again. And I'm only sitting with 20 big blinds. I'm in early position with pocket fives. I have a short stack and in a fast structure. Pocket pairs, I'm just gonna go for it. I decide to go all in. Cutoff player makes the call with a 40,000 starting stack. So basically playing over an 80,000 chip pot real quick after break. I show my hand and I'm up against ace queen. Now, another flip that we are trying to win. I'm a very slight favorite to win, but when the flop comes ace high, hmm, that's not gonna be good. I lose another flip now, lose another all in, and my chip stack goes down. 
to about 30,000 at the 4,000 big blind level. And not too shortly after that, I pick up ace five off suit, and it's an easy all in with any ace sitting with less than 10 big blinds. So a jam folds around to the big blind player who wakes up with pocket nines. And the nines are going to flop a set and flop us dead. GG's to this player, GG's to everyone in this tournament. I made my donation of $800 into the prize pool, and I'm gonna call it a day. That's enough pain for one video. All right, another walk of shame video. <laughs> another bust out, it is what it is. Blinds go up really quickly. Just short stack, couldn't win a flip, and I'm out. Uh, at least this was a cheap one, 800 bucks. Uh, yeah, that's it. Three bust outs this video, hopefully you enjoyed it. You guys voted to show every single bust out, and here it is. So thanks so much for watching the, uh, the all in shit show that this tournament was. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully, uh, I don't know, got some cash videos on the way, got some more tournament stuff obviously in the next five weeks. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sticking to the end. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.